And we're live. Welcome to another edition of the Roxim Live Training. Uh, this is where we talk about Roxim software and how to use it and how to build better rockets so that they fly higher and you get them back more often. Uh, today, uh, we are going to do a couple of things. Uh, the typical things, first we got a sticker and you can see the sticker right here. Um, and you can see it on your screen. I got my monitor over here, so I'm just double checking to make sure that I, I have it. Um, there is a coupon code on the bottom of the screen. Um, so if you go to our website and you place an order for $10 or more, and you put that coupon code in there on your order form, you don't even have to go to the page where the, the a sticker is you just go and put the coupon code in the coupon code field and it will automatically add it to your order and we'll give you this free Roxim Live number 18 sticker. This is our 18th episode so that's why it's got an 18 on it. Um, so you can get that. Uh, we are also going to give away a poster again and the poster goes to people that are here actually during this live event. Um, anybody can get the sticker, including those people that are watching on our YouTube channel. Um, the poster we're going to give away is the X-15 again. Um, we, this is probably going to be the, the last time in a, in a bit that we give away the X-15 poster. Um, we just have an extra one printed up, and so we say, well, let's just give it to somebody during the Roxium Live. Um, so now I'm going to go here and look at my questions that are coming in through Facebook. Um, and if you're new here and you've never done this before, go ahead and put in your name and say hello so that we can recognize you and so I know who's here. Uh, we have Joe Noble already logged in, Brian Barbalis, Samuel Britton, from West Texas. Well, hello, Samuel. It's good to know you. Uh, we have Ronald Zacker, Stu McNabb, and we have Elizabeth. And Elizabeth asks the first question of the day, which is really cool. Her question is, are episodes 1 through 17 on the website? And the answer is yes. I'll show you that in just a second. I just want to recognize Ralph Strasser from Oregon. So hello, Ralph. Um, so let me go to my computer here. Uh, make sure you write down that coupon code for the, uh, the sticker. Uh, we'll, we'll put it up again later in this uh, episode. So here is my uh, desktop. And let me open up a new browser window. Come on, Mr. Browser Window. Doesn't want to. There we go. Not that one. This one. And new window, and I put it over here on that monitor. So let me drag it over here, and I'll be show Elizabeth where those are. Um, if you come to the Apogee website uh, right now, currently this image right here. If you click on that image, that will take you to our archive page. But I can't guarantee that in the future this image is going to be there uh, because we change that image out occasionally. Um, our, if you go to the How To and Guides menu right here, click on that, and then go over here to Software, click on that, and then you come over here to Roxim Live Training right there, and you click on that, and that will bring up our all the previous episodes. Um, and we have numbers 1 through 17 listed on this page. There is something new on this page that I'm sure you're going to love because there's a lot of different topics and people have told us, Tim, I don't want to sit through an hour of video to find my question answered. Well, what we've gone ahead and done is we've put the time code in where that particular topic starts. And so if you were looking for clustering, um, if you go to 19 minutes and 33 seconds in the video on YouTube, you just move that slider bar along on the bottom of the screen until you get to 19 minutes and 33 seconds. Um, that's where that uh, question is answered. And you'll see there's, there's a lot of information that we've already covered. 
Um, I'm giving you vertigo by, by sliding that down so fast. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, let me go see if there's any other questions that have come in. No questions. So if there's no questions, uh, we might be done. Um, so go ahead and type in your question. We did have a holdover question from last time, and I forgot who asked this question. The last time Michelle did the presentation and I did a pre-recorded one because I was out of town. Um, I'm going to be out of town again in a couple weeks at the National Sport Launch, and then Michelle will probably cover for me again here. I might try to see if I can do something live from the National Sport Launch um, because that would be really cool to be out on the field doing a live presentation. I have to see if my if I got cell phone service if that's available. <laughs> we'll we'll try it. If not, I'll maybe pre-record something from the field. That's going to be in Alamosa, Colorado, the weekend of Memorial Day of 2021. So that's just a few days away. Um, it's a big first you know, post-COVID launch for the National Sp uh, Association of Rocketry. Um, so that's going to be really fun. Uh, so the question that came in previously last week when I wasn't here, it would be great if you guys can do a newsletter about various ways to spin a rocket, comparing canted motors versus canted fins versus fin tabs. That would also be great to understand is the number of fins or the number of tabs affect the rate of spin and what creates the optimal spin forth, sp force. Um, and the reason is with 3D printing, we can easily create fan blades around a rocket. Your newsletters are fantastic educational resource. Okay, so first, um, where is spinning? Uh, let me, let me, uh, um, we got some other questions here. Samuel Britton writes, I've never used Roxon before. I need to find out the CG for several new builds. Does it have a library of commercial made rockets? Okay, I'm going to get to that question, Samuel. Um, as we're talking about fins that are spinning. Um, okay, so... First, let me go to the website and show you a couple of resources here on spinning fins. So if you go to how to and guides and you go to, let's go to advanced construction videos right here, click on that and then come over here to all videos because you can see we have 330 videos so far on various topics and going to all videos will show you all of them and I'm giving you vertical again here because I'm scrolling really fast um, but there's all different subjects but what you do on your keyboard on your computer um, on Windows it's um, control F on the Macintosh it's command F and when you do that up here in the top you'll get a little search bar and this search bar only searches this specific page. And so um, I'm going to search for the word spin and see what comes up. We got 12 of 12 matches. Um, looks like the first ones have to do with the Texas Twister rocket. Um, so let me go through the bottom. And actually, the very, very first video that we did in the advanced construction video series was how to add spin tabs to your rocket's fins. So that is video number one of currently 330 of them. And these are archived here on this web page. Uh, let me see if there's any other ones that uh, might be good for you. So that's it. So that's that on the videos. Let me double check on the newsletters. So again, on the website, go to how to and guides and then come up here to peak flight newsletter. Click on that. And again, go to all newsletters right up here. Click on that because we got 547 of these. So we've been doing this even longer than the, the videos. And again, command F and it's already built, uh, it's already, since I already had it up here, 
uh, spin. Um, I'm going to go through these and find them. Uh, we got a couple of ones about the spin doctor. Um, issue number 228, why spinning rockets fly straighter. Um, the spool, okay, so that's the one I want to look at. Let's see if there's anything really cool in here that you might want to see. Why do spinning rockets fly straighter? Why don't they fly as high as rockets with straight fins? Okay, so here is a couple of ways. Um, the, the question was, how do you get rockets to spin? One of the ways, one of the cool ways is shown right here. And this is a helical launch tower. And this was actually used by NASA to spin rockets as they launch. And so it's kind of like a launch tower, but um, the rails are, are twisted. So as the rocket comes out, it twists, and that that's imparts a spin to the rocket. So that's one way to do it. Um, and then you got spin tabs, which is shown here. On the bottom of fins, you just have a little tab. Um, and then you can also just cant the fin completely. And this is the exterminator. And this one, the fins, and you won't be able to see this. Let me uh, come back over here. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this, but these fins, if I hold the rocket perfectly level, maybe you can see that the fin is, this has got like a two degree cant on it. So the, um, it angles downwards a little bit. And that also will cause the fin, the rocket to spin. Um, and spinning rockets will make them fly straighter, as the newsletter has already said. Okay, so that's some resources. Um, let me go back to my screen here. Okay, so that was newsletter 228. And let's uh, go into Roxim. Now, Roxim, unfortunately, can't do spinning fins uh, because Roxim is three degrees of freedom. And what three degrees of freedom means is the rocket can go up and down, that's one degree of freedom. Um, it can go this way with the wind, and then it can also pitch. So that's three degrees of freedom. That's what Roxim can do. There's three other degrees of freedom that we need for spinning rockets. And the most obvious one is roll, like this. Roxim can't do that. Um, and then yaw is this way, where pitch is this way, yaw is this way, this axis. And then the um, yaw, roll, and what was the... Uh, oh, and then um, you can translate this way without without yawing. Um, so it's kind of like um, one way is with the wind and the other way would be parallel or, or perpendicular to the wind. So that's your six degrees of freedom. Roxim can't do that, but the Roxim Pro can. And we are getting closer and closer to releasing Roxim Pro again. We had it in the past um, and we're, we're adding a new feature called the, the Rock uh, the launch visualizer, and that's what's going to allow you to do spinning rockets and actually see what happens. Um, cool. Okay, so let me show you what that might look like. Um, so let me bring up Roxim Pro here, um, and then I can get to uh, Samuel's question about the center of gravity. So let me bring up a design in Roxim. And Roxim Pro and Roxim look very similar. The difference is in the simulation part. The design of the rocket is pretty much identical. Um, so I can, I can open a design and make changes in it just like you would in Roxim. The, the differences in the design is Roxim Pro allows canted fins and canted motors, where Roxim doesn't. So there's some features in Roxim Pro that you won't be able to use in Roxim right now, but eventually you will if you decide to go for, with Roxim Pro. 
Um, so let me open a design. So opening a design is, is very similar. So that's that button up here, the file folder, which is pretty traditional. Um, now the designs are stored in the application folder of Roxim. So I'm going to go to my applications and I'm going to go to, I need to sort this by uh, name. So I got Roxim Pro down here. And Roxim will be in the same spot. it will be in the Roxim folder instead of the Roxim Pro folder. So hopefully you understand that difference. And then inside of there, there's a folder called Designs. And you open that up, and this gives you a whole list of designs. So this is Samuel's question is, are there commercially made rockets? Are there design files for them? And yes, there are. And here are, here are a ton of them. There's probably over 200 different uh, rockets in here um, like I can open up lock precision and you can see there's um, there's a whole bunch in this folder. There's almost 20 of them here um, if I go back what I want to do is to find the exterminator um, so that's an apogee kit so I'm going to look for apogee components open that folder and find the exterminator which is this one right here and open that so this is where it is down here. And um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see that center of gravity because Samuel is wanting to know where the center of gravity is. And I think he understands that Roxanne can display it, but just in case there's new people watching. So over here, there's a little button. I'm going to click on that. And that detaches the bottom window from the, uh, the main screen of Roxim, and that allows me to make this bigger so you can see the rocket. And right here is the center of gravity symbol. Um, so that's, oops, I attached it to the top of the screen by accident. Let me attach, reattach it to the bottom and put a rocket motor in it because that center of gravity, once we put a rocket engine in it, it's going to move back here. So to put a rocket engine in it, you come up here to the prepare for launch button. And that's this one here. It kind of looks like the bottom of the rocket and two arrows putting down on the launch pad. So this is preparing for launch. And I'm going to choose an engine. And it really doesn't matter what I'm going to choose. So I'm going to just choose an F20. And I'm going to choose a delay and we'll choose a seven second delay and click OK. Um, and then I'm going to click OK here because I just want to show you that the center of gravity has moved. Um, on your screen in Roxim, if you want to make this bigger, um, you, can, you can make this screen by grabbing up here at the top. On Windows, this looks a little bit different. Um, you don't have a nice bar, um, but if you move your cursor up and down, it will change into this double arrow when you're on top of where you can click and drag and that will allow you to drag the window but there's only so far you can drag that window if you want it bigger then you have to detach the window but you can also make this image larger by right clicking with your mouse and it brings up this little contextual menu and then you can zoom in and then it zoomed in and then you can click and drag to see where you know the components are and so here's our center of gravity right here and you can see that if I zoom back to original it will tell me exactly where it's located and this is with the rocket engine installed and that's what you really want to know right before you launch uh, because you want to make sure that your center of gravity is in front of your center of pressure and here's the center of pressure symbol let me zoom in on that it's a circle within a circle, and then the inside one is shaded. All right. I'll zoom original. Okay, so we want to we want to uh, show you that spinning rockets how they work here. So I think this rocket. I'm not sure if this one was set up since this was an original Roxim design. Um, it was probably without a canted fin. So here's our fin set. I'm going to double click on that to open it. Let me make it a little smaller so you can see it. 
Okay, so here's the fin. Um, and we have database plan points. I'm looking, okay, here, this is, this is the difference you'll find in Roxim Pro and versus Roxim. Roxim Pro, Pro has the fin cant and the fin pivot where Roxim doesn't. Um, so I can add an angle right here to cant the fins like I do in real life. Uh, but I, I, I'm not going to cant them right now. I want to run a simulation with them out, without them canted, and then we'll run a simulation with them canted. So you can see the difference. So we'll just click OK here. I just wanted to verify that. Um, now I'm going to go and actually set up the simulation. So I'm going to again go back to prepare for launch before I just loaded the motor. Um, what you typically do is, uh, if you're new to Roxim, is you go across these tabs right here. Um, so flight events is when the parachute is going to deploy. So right now it says deploy now, which is not a good thing because as soon as we push the launch button, it's gonna deploy the parachute and that's no good. So we wanna say deploy at maximum engine ejection delay. So we'll select that. Um, next is our starting state. Um, so first is our launch guide length. Um, this we're going to launch off of a five foot long launch rod. Um, and we're going to launch it. Let's launch it straight up. So that's zero degrees from vertical. And that's this um, wheel right here. We can adjust it by with massive changes just by grabbing it. Or we can just type in a number over here and then hit tab on your keyboard. You can see that snapped right to vertical. And then the next is the launch guide azimuth. And this is a compass direction. So north is straight up. East would be 90 degrees. South would be 180. And then west would be 270. Uh, but since we're launching straight up, it really doesn't matter what our azimuth angle is because we're going straight up. Um, we're gonna skip simulation controls. I recommend that you just leave that alone. The default values are really good for Roxim. Um, our launch conditions, um, this is also different in Roxim Pro. This is our launch site. Um, this is, you have to specify an, an exact location on the planet Earth. Um, where in Roxim, it's just, the only thing you really need to know is your altitude above sea level. So I'm going to choose a launch site. Um, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to choose um, this one right here, Kursarge Area Rocketry Society, their launch site. And it populates the altitude and the latitude and the longitude. So that's fine. We also have a temperature of about 60 degrees, somewhere in there. Um, next, I want to give it the wind table. So now this is where we're specifying the wind. Um, in Roxim Pro, it's a table because you can have various winds at different altitudes and they can also vary in direction. Um, so right now I have a wind from 270. So that, remember that's from the west. West will be from 270 blowing towards the east. And I have it at eight miles an hour, but I'm gonna bump that up. I'm gonna bump it up to like 12 miles an hour because I wanna really exaggerate the, um, the flight of the rocket. So you can see what happens when there's canted fins versus non-canted fins. Um, so I have a steady 12 miles an hour at all altitudes, all the way up to 20,000 feet. Okay, so now I'm gonna run the simulation and what I'm gonna do is click on the flight profile. And this is where Roxim Pro is different from Roxim because um, in Roxim it's just a two-dimensional flight profile. We're in Roxim Pro, it's a three-dimensional flight profile on the planet Earth. Let me uh, back out of here because something happened. Let me go to 3D. Okay. You could see it was kind of ghosted. Um, that's because it was, it was showing transparent. And we didn't want transparent because we actually want to see the rocket. So I'm just going to run that simulation one more time here. It only takes a second. So it's running the simulation. The results are in. 
hopefully you can see this. It's right now it's loading the Earth, and it's kind of like a, a Google Google Earth type of thing where we want to see the whole globe. Um, so it's going out to the internet trying to fetch the maps, and this time it's being really slow compared to that first time. So while it's doing that, let me check the uh, comments here. How much is Roxin Pro going to cost, says Joe Noble. The, the question, that's a good question, Joe. I haven't decided. Um, I have to make it, I have to pay for these maps every time they load. <laughs> um, and so that has to come from the subscription fees. It's going to be a subscription service um, because of this, this issue of the maps. Hopefully it loads faster this time. Ah, uh, yes, much faster. I don't know what happened that last time. Okay, so we, we have the launch, launch uh, the, the rocket sitting on the launch pad, and you can see it's an actual three-dimensional image of the rocket. It just looks like the, the, our real rocket. Our launch pad is underground, though, <laughs> um, and that's because um, our maps aren't exactly... Uh, matching up to the altitude that we put in. Um, so uh, it's a little bit low, but you can actually see the rocket. And this view down here is a close-up image of the rocket. I'm zooming out so you can kind of see the lay of the land here. So we have a road coming this way, and our launch site is here, and then right here is where the launch pad is. And I'll, let me zoom back in on that. And I'm going to move it around. So north, here's our compass down here in the corner. So north, let me rotate this around so north is, is straight up and down. So you can kind of see. And remember, we said we have a wind coming out of the west. So it's going across the screen left to right at 12 miles an hour. And I'm going to rotate it down a little bit so we can kind of get a perspective of what's going on here. So the rocket again is right here, and let's launch it and kind of see what the trajectory looks like. And you can see, um, what it's trying to do is keep the rocket centered in the screen. And sometimes that makes it a little hard to see the entire profile of the rocket. So I'm just gonna let it run all the way back down to the ground. I can see it's gonna take 35 seconds to get back down to the ground. You can see the rocket is drifting under the parachute. That little red thing is the parachute right there. Um, I'm going to pause it here when we get back down to the ground. So you can see, it looks like our rocket's going to be landing in this forest over there. Let me pause it here. Okay, I'm going to change views. So to change views, I can come up over here. So right now we're looking at the view that says, keep the rocket centered within the entire screen. Um, I'm going to change it to this next one over, which means keep the view the same throughout the entire flight. And this one will really allow us to see the trajectory of the rocket. And that's so you can, let me zoom in a little bit. So, so we already know, here's our rocket, and this is our close-up screen. You can see the flame is coming out of the rocket, and we got smoke coming out of the rocket. And this is two seconds in into the flight down here. Um, you can't see my compass over here, so let me make this a little bit smaller. All right, so let me zoom in. And I'm going to scroll the flight a little bit further. Okay, so now you can see our trajectory. So it's kind of arcing into the wind, because remember, our wind is coming from the west, blowing across this way. Um, and it's arced over. The parachute pops out. I can just um, barely see the parachute. So if I click on this button right here, it's find the rocket. And that will put the rocket right dab in the middle of the screen. And then I can zoom in on it. And then you can see that there is a parachute out right now. Whoops, I just lost it again. So just click on find the rocket. And zoom out just a little bit. All right, so let me go back to my original view. So we can kind of see the trajectory, because this is the important part. 
we want to know what happens when you spin a rocket. So this is a flight of the rocket without canted fins. And the rocket is landing over here. Um, this is our apogee point right up here. Now let me back the flight up. So it, it lands right ab about approximately 675 feet away from the launch site. And let me back it up until we get to apogee. So you can see where that is. So, so we're about apogee right now. We're at 917 feet. Okay, so now let's run that same simulation and camp the fins and see what happens. So we're gonna go to um, our design components tab, go back to our fins, double click on them um, in our radial position and let's camp them by five degrees. Hit tab. Okay, so now they're canted, and, but unfortunately you can't see them as being canted, especially, especially if you go to 3D. Um, if you look at the rocket, let me rotate this around. They're not canted in this, the drawing, but it, during the simulation, the simulation sees them as canted. So when it runs all the equations, it sees them as canted. So let me click OK here. And we're not going to change anything. We're just going to go back and run the simulation one more time. Nothing's changing. Starting state is the same. We're launching straight up. The wind is still coming from the west. And let's see that flight profile. Oops, I put it on that screen because my cursor went over there. <laughs> Let me get this over here. Make it as big as you can so you can see it all. Okay, so let me go back to this view right here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna close out, well, actually I'll leave this here. Because because they're canted, we expect the rocket to spin. And by looking at this view down here, I want you to see if the rocket is actually spinning. So let's go ahead and launch it. Uh, let me let me move north back around to where it's at our top of our screen. So again, north is up here, south is down, east is to the right, and somewhere in here is our rocket. It's right there on this grassy area. Um, I'm not exactly sure where this club launches from on this field, so I just put it right there. Okay, so before the rocket weathercocked into the wind, now. Let's see what happens when we play the animation. It's still weathercocking. Let me back it up a little bit because we're, there's our apogee point. Let me stop it. Oops, I went too far. Let me get it to apogee. Right there's apogee. So now we're 946 and I think the previous one we were 910 or 919. I'm looking right here on the summary screen. So previously we were about 919 feet, now we're at 947 feet. So our rocket actually went higher because it has spinning, because it didn't weathercock as far into the wind. Um, and let me go, oops, I wanna go the other direction. Okay, so I'm, what I'm looking at is down here, I'm looking at, is the rocket actually spinning? Um, it did spin, but then it stopped spinning. So uh, the, the flame is kind of obscuring things. So I'm going to turn the flame off, or at least the uh, smoke off, so we can see our fins right here. So that's what I'm looking at. See, as it comes off the pad, it did rotate, but then it stopped spinning for some reason. And I'm not sure why. And then it, that's where the parachute popped out. And because it went higher, the rocket actually drifted further into the trees. Before we were at, at 646 feet, and now we're at 895 feet into the trees because we went straighter. Um, so let me close that. 
nobody's nobody's uh, it has any Roxim questions. I'm looking over here on my monitor, and I'm looking for Roxim questions. And if nobody has questions, I'm just going to continue to play. Um, Craig asks, um, how do you check weight on the booster separate from the sustainer? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, and we also had one, somebody asked, will Roxim Pro be available for TARC? That was Bill Lindsay Jr. The answer is yes, but it's a subscription. So each person on TARC, each person on the team will have to buy their own subscription. Will there be a separate lower price for TARC for Roxim Pro? The answer is probably not because of I have to pay for I have to pay for outside maps. Uh, uh, Craig writes, uh, my booster from Quantum Leap separates at 350. Is that enough altitude? So we'll, we'll cover that in just a second. One more thing on Roxin Pro and then we'll go to uh, Craig's question. Um, I want to show you one more other thing. Uh, prepare for launch. Oops. Um, if I go to starting state, um, I can also give it a starting roll rate. Remember that helical launch tower that I showed you earlier? Um, if you have something like that, your, as your rocket comes out, it's going to have its own roll rate. Um, so I can put in a roll rate here, and I'll put in 360 degrees per second. So that's one revolution per second. So that's not really fast, but it's better than normal. Um, so I'm going to make that change, and let's run that simulation one last time. And see what it looks like. I have to reorient the camera every single time. Oops, it just rotated my north around again. If you can't see what I'm doing, there's a compass down here on the bottom left that allows me to rotate. And we zoom in. So there's our rocket sitting on the pad. Now, when we run the simulation, um, I expect it to go a little bit straighter this time. And sure enough, it went a lot straighter. And it went off of my screen. And also notice, uh, before it was going to the west, this time, because it was spinning, it actually came towards us a little bit to the south. And because it went higher, it's going a lot, it's drifting a lot farther away. Uh, see, now we're gonna be, let me pause it here, at the end of the flight. Now we're at 1,200 feet away, so we're almost double the distance that we were from that first simulation. Uh, because we went straighter up. Uh, so let me back it up here to the peak altitude. You can see what I'm looking at is right here. I'm looking till right to where I get to that dot, which is my apogee point. Okay, so now we're at 977 feet. Before we were about 949 feet, somewhere in there. You can also see this trajectory. Um, so now we're looking towards the south. Um, so if you look here on the ground, let me zoom in on that. You can see this red line is our ground track. Because the rocket started, you know, our altitudes doesn't match our map altitude. That's why the red line is not visible the entire time, but it did match over here. Um, the rocket went kind of south and then a little bit to the west before it hit Apogee. Um, and then let's back it up again and let's see it, see how much more it's spinning than it did before. So look at this picture down here and just see it spinning as it comes off the pad. Now, it didn't spin much. Maybe my, my fin cant angle and my pre-roll may have canceled out. But it, it did definitely go straighter, which is cool. So that's here in the, the summary screen. 
So here's the last flight, 979 feet. The one previously with just the canted fins was 947 feet. And the one without canted fins, because it weathercocked into the wind more, was 919 feet. So let me uh, go over here and uh, let's do Craig's question. Um, he's got a quantum leap. I guess that's a two-stage rocket. Separates at 350 feet. Is that enough altitude? Well, the answer to that, um, I don't know if I have a quantum leap. I do have this rocket here. Um, this is a two-stage rocket. Um, this one was a, was a question that somebody sent in yesterday, um, and they were they had they wanted us to troubleshoot it because what they were observing was that the rocket, this big two-stage rocket with an I and an H motor, was only going to 382 feet. So what was going on there? So they asked to troubleshoot it. So I'll just show you what I had looked at. So to load the engine, they're already loaded. So I'm gonna click on prepare for launch. Um, so we have the H123 in the sustainer stage and the I357 in the booster stage. Um, we have the booster deploying its parachute at stage separation and the sustainer deploys its parachute at um, Maximum ejection delay. It's got two parachutes. Um, it's not set up for dual deployment, but that shouldn't matter because we're only going to 382 feet. So what's going on there? Uh, simulation controls, like I said, just leave that one alone. Starting state, we have a straight up launch. Um, since this is a big rocket, let's make it 98 inches long for our launch rail. And our launch conditions, um, we have a five mile an hour wind. And let's go look at it in the flight profile and see what that looks like. So now the flight profile is different from the 3D flight visualizer in Roxim. So now we're in Roxim. So this is different from Roxim Pro. Um, so here's the rocket sitting down here on the pad. And then when we launch it, see what happens. The rocket goes up. Here's the smoke coming out. The rocket's going up and it's coming down. And there's our boost, our sustainer stage igniting. So something is not right with this simulation. So I hope, hopefully you can pick it up real quick what's going on. Because as soon as I saw this image of what the rocket's doing, I, I picked it up right away. Um, so the, the, there's a delay in the booster motor. And then the booster falls off and immediately the upper stage ignites. So the problem is the booster motor is set up incorrectly. So, so what I think this should have been set up with was the I-357-0 is what it should have been, and then the six second in the upper stage. So let's turn that around. So let's go back here. So this is the upper stage. So let's set the upper stage at six seconds. And let's set our booster stage, this second one down here, at zero. And since there's not a zero in the list, we need to choose custom. And custom allows us to pick any number we want. And by default, it's zero. So let's use that. So that's this motor right here. This is the booster stage. This is the sustainer stage. And let's run the simulation again. Click on the flight profile and launch it the rocket takes off okay the booster has fallen away and our rocket is now over a thousand feet so this is much better and it um, it deployed a little bit early but not too bad it was slowing down there at the top and i'm just going to grab the slider bar down here on the bottom and just move it along to where it gets down to the ground okay so that was a much better flight um, and so now it gets back to Craig's question. He's got a similar rocket. So now we've got it kind of set up. He says his is separating at 350 feet. Is that enough altitude? And the answer to that is maybe. 
Um, so like on this one right here, it looks like it's separating. Um, so the, the, the smoke is kind of obscuring what's going on here. Uh, let me see if I can turn the smoke off. So I'm going to go over here to the flight pro profile preferences, hit down the smoke effects tab. I'm going to turn that off and then click OK. Okay, so now we should be able to run the simulation without any smoke obscuring the booster stage. Okay, so here's the booster stage, and it's just separated. And this one is separating, um, you know, about 266 feet in the air. And it separates, and it drops away. The question is, is that high enough? And I think this flight is okay. So is it high enough? Yes. Now, the next question is, is it coming down safely? Um, on this particular rocket, I can't tell if it's got a parachute in it. Um, if, remember when we did the flight uh, preferences, or setting it up under the flight events, it said there is a parachute in the booster stage, and it deploys at stage separation. So let's have it deploy uh, after stage separation at a time of two seconds. Let's see if the trajectory changes here. So all I'm changing here is when the parachute deploys. So I'm going to hit flight profile again. So here's the rocket. And it takes off. It's coasting upwards. It's coming down. One, two seconds. I can't really tell. Um, so let me look at one more place here. So I'm going to hit uh, this button down here, Details. And that brings up the details of the flight. And what I'm going to look for, I'm going to scroll down in the list. And I want to look for um, Booster 2. I'm going to look for its data. And so right now the booster is already on the ground. So I need to back up the simulation to where the booster is not on the ground. And I'm going to look at its velocity. So the booster velocity at this point, right before it hits the ground, is about 60 feet per second. So is, the pair, is it falling slow enough to where that booster stage is not going to do any damage to itself or to people on the ground? And at 60 feet per second, that's, eh, that's pretty fast. Um, so it really depends on the weight of the booster. And I think that was one of the questions that I saw here in, in our comments. Uh, how do you, yeah, it was also Craig, how do you check weight on the booster separate from the sustainer? Um, and, and the answer to that one, Craig, is it's, you can get that information, but you're going to have to do a little math. Okay, so so he wants to know, and I want to know what the weight of this booster is. So right now, um, I am going to go to the design components. Um, I'm just thinking I'm, there's there's several things I could do here. I'm just trying to find the easiest one. So right now, the entire weight of the rocket is 6,500 grams. And that includes two rocket motors, but it also includes the propellant inside those motors. Um, so if I take the motors out, so I'm going to clear all the motors out, click OK. So now our weight drops down to 5,843 grams. So before we were at 6,500. So now I know the weight of the booster, or of the whole rocket without the, uh, the booster or without the motors. So I'll bring up a calculator here, 6,500 minus 
43, so the motor mass was 657 grams. Um, so let me clear that and let me type in 5843. And now what I want to do is show it with just the sustainer alone. So it's going to drop booster mass off. So now we're looking at the mass of the rocket. The mass of the rocket without the, the booster stage, and it didn't change. So then I need to look at here. Our booster is like really lightweight, 5843. Oh, I was looking at the wrong number. <laughs> I should have been looking at the selected stage mass right here. So that's 3636. So I want to take 5843 minus 3636. So 2200 grams is the weight of the booster stage alone. So that's what I, I meant, Craig, by you would have to do a little bit of math. Um, because it doesn't show you the booster stage by itself. That would be a really good feature. That would be a really good feature, Matt. <laughs> Talking to our programmer. But he's not listening. So, because um, we could actually put the weight of the sustainer and the weight of the booster right next to them in the parch tree. That would be really cool. So hopefully yeah, that answered your, your question, Craig. Um, and Samuel writes, does Roxim allow for putting a target touchdown point or maximum area and having software calculate the angle of launch? And the answer is it doesn't calculate the angle of launch. I can tell you that right now. Uh, we kind of touched on this previously in one of our previous videos is what is the launch, the optimum launch angle um, for closest to the pad recovery. And he's, he's looking at a, a calculated touchdown point. And one of the things of a touchdown point is this is where the government might be interested in what you're doing, Samuel. <laughs> Why do you want to touch? Why do you want your rocket to land at a specific point? Hmm. Um, one of the one of the things that rocks him. We one of the reasons we don't allow for the trajectory to go all the way back down to the ground in the free version of rocks him, the trial version, the free trial. The free trial stops at apogee. And it doesn't go down to the ground. And the reason it doesn't go down to the ground, because a long time ago, when the United States was still fighting wars in Iraq, there was a lot of people in the Middle East that were downloading Roxim. But they don't fly model rockets in the Middle East. So they want to know what, how to get the rocket to land at a specific point. And so now it becomes a military issue. You know, our military doesn't want people firing rockets at our troops. So we purposely limited to the, the, the free trial to stop at Apogee so that people couldn't see where it comes down to the ground. And we're going to do the same thing in Roxim Pro when it comes out. You're, if you have the free trial, your rockets are going to stop up here. They're not going to come back down to the ground. You're not going to be able to see where they land. In order to see where they land, um, you know, we, we need to know that you're not a terrorist. Sorry. <laughs> um, Al Hanzik says, hello. Um, this is just what I needed for my two-stage, soon to be launched. He says, thank you. I think he's talking about the two-stage rocket that we just did. Um, Samuel Britton says, we had a Boy Scout competition for the closest to the land, landing to launch to the launch pad. That, and the NAR has a similar... They call it the spot landing competition. Um, but it's not, it, it's really difficult to, to do that 
because it takes a number of simulations to run. Let me go back here to Roxim Pro and I'll show you one of the other features in Roxim Pro. This is, this is Roxim Pro again. You can see right up here at the top, it says Roxim Pro. Roxim Pro has um, a thing called a landing point pattern. We call it a splash pattern, where it's in general, where is the rocket gonna land if we know something about the launch? Um, so let me go here to launch. So again, we're using the exterminator. And um, so the starting state, um, let, me, let me go over here to uncertainties. So remember on this simulation, we were running, launching straight up. We have a twist coming off the pad and we also have canted fins at five degrees. And this is where we're gonna add in some uncertainties. Um, and I need to zero them all out first so that we can add just one or two and see what happens. So there's 18 different uncertainties you could add. Um, let's just change one of them. Let's just change the launch angle. Um, so right now we are launching straight up. So let's give it an elevation angle of um, six, uh, no, six degrees. So, so basically what, what we're saying is the launch rocket sitting on the pad going straight up, but we're not exactly sure it's exactly straight up because we don't have any way to gauge exactly are we ex we're just eyeballing it and so we're saying okay could it be up to six degrees from vertical and it could go in either direction and so let's run instead of just running one simulation let's run 20 simulations so i'm going to run 20 simulations and then launch it So it's on simulation number seven right now of 20. You can see it runs them pretty quick. And it ran it. Um, so if everything was, was perfect, if it did perfectly straight up, this would be the nominal values, just like we had before. Uh, but then over here, you have a splash pattern. And I can go here to the Roxim landing point chart. Okay, and this brings up this chart here of our landing points. And so it's, it's a latitude and longitude, and I can change that. Let me change that to feet relative to the launch point. And our nominal landing point is this gray triangle right here. And our launch point should be a green triangle so here's our green triangle over here and all these other ones are with the launch pad angled somewhere between plus or minus six degrees we don't know what they are but it's just they're random and if i click on one of the points so i just clicked on this point and now it brings up what the actual um elevation angle was. So to land at that point, it would have to be 3.6 degrees from vertical. And this chart right here is called a splash pattern. Um, so if you were trying to land at a specific point, what you would probably do is try to create a specific splash pattern to get at that point. Um, so right now, I just angled, you know, um, plus or minus the elevation angle. If we also change the azimuth angle, then it would be more of a circular pattern. So this is called a splash pattern. This is only available in Roxim Pro, which is not available right now, but it's coming soon, but we haven't set the price on it. Um, and soon means hopefully within the next month because we're getting really close. Uh, we are at um, our time. So let me bring up this screen again so you can see the coupon code to get your free 
Roxim 18 sticker. This is commemorative edition, and this coupon code is only available for six months, um, and it's valid until 11-14 of 21. Um, after that, you'll have to pay for it, and it's $5, so it's a $5 sticker um, printed here just yesterday. And we're also going to give away a Saturn, or an X-15 poster, and you have to be here right now to win the poster. So if you're watching this on YouTube, see you next time. <laughs> but for those of us that are still, avail uh, still here live, let me see how many people are still here. We have 15 people still here, which is really cool. So thank you for being here and sticking through this whole thing. Um, Stu McNabs, can you put in more than one coupon code with an order? And the answer to that, is, Stu, is no. You can only use one coupon at a time. So if you have a coupon for something else, um, and we don't give coupon codes often. Um, we do give them if you are a subscriber to our newsletter. Um, every newsletter issue, we give a free gift in that to be a subscriber. So make sure you subscribe. Uh, but you can only get one free item at a time. Um, that's just the way our coupon system works. And we don't want to give away the store, um, you know, waiting for one person to, you know, oh, if I just do, I can do all my coupons all at once. Yeah, we know, we understand. <laughs> you know, I, I, would, I would try to milk the system too. Now, I'm not talking, saying that you are, but most people would probably try it. We have to stay in business too. Um, so let's give away the uh, poster. So um, so this time, um, let's do the 14th person that says, uh, give us the name of your favorite rocket. And you can do it multiple times because I, you know I'm, I'm doing it 14, so you can submit it several times to see if you can be that 14th person. And my screen over here is the official screen. I don't know how they're showing up on your screen. Um, so the 14th person, and I'll give you a, a couple of minutes here to give us the name of your favorite rocket that you've built. And so that's waiting for that to come in. Stu McNabb is the first one. He says Alpha. Brian Barbalis says Mad Max, or Red Max. Don Thomas says the X-15. Don, you're my favorite person so far today. Uh, Joe Noble says Avatar. Avatar, twice. Now I gotta count these. So keep them coming. It's gonna be probably a minute or two. Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't have gone up the number 14. Okay, so Stu McNad is number one. Oops. I, uh, hopefully we're still on. I clicked on the wrong thing. Ah, come on, Facebook. Hopefully. Hopefully I'm still live. <laughs> it says I'm still live. Ah, okay, now they're really starting to come in. And see, what, what I did was I accidentally clicked on Stu McNabb's name, and it took me to Stu McNabb's Facebook page. And now... When I come back to uh, my Facebook page here, um, it kind of restarted the whole thing all over again. <laughs> oh, uh, what am I going to do? Who am I going to pick? All right, so they're still coming in. And they're coming in. Yeah, they're coming in fast and furious. So I'm going to have to... I don't know where to start counting, from the bottom or the top. I don't know the oldest message. Oh, you guys are awesome. <laughs> oh. Okay, so I'm not sure who it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna announce the winner after we're done. Because I'm gonna have this, because when we're done, then it will pause them from coming in. And then I can actually count them because what's going on is they're coming in and they're scrolling and, and it's making it really hard to count. 
<laughs> so somebody's going to win the poster. It's going to be real cool. Uh, again, we do these Rock Sim Lives every Friday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, which is 12 noon on the East Coast. Um, and uh, my name is, uh, let me put up the outro um, so you can get our web address is apogeerockets.com. It's also up here on the top of our screen. So hopefully you can see that. So it stays at live the whole time, but we put it out here in our slide out. Um, Derek Villar, he, he's our graphic artist and he makes those for me. They're really awesome. And I have to show them because they, they look so cool. Uh, but then it went away. So let me turn it on one last time before I say goodbye. So you've been watching the Rock Sim Live. Thanks for showing up. I really do appreciate it. And thank you for all the really great questions. If you have more, you know, come back again next Friday and we can answer them again. Um, so I'm going to end this video. I'm going to give you a five second countdown. So five, four, three, two, one.